Alright, hi, thanks for stopping by and checking out this video. Today I'm going to go through how I got those tones on the intro track coming into this. Um, this is a new product put out by Neural D DSP um, by an amp company I'd never heard of before until they put this out. So this is the Granifry, I think I'm pronouncing that right, <laughs> by Powered by Omega is the uh, amp company. Um, I really like this plugin a lot. I think this one is the most I've been excited about since uh, I first tried out the uh, uh, archetype Pliny one. So for this one, it's a little simpler, which is kind of cool. I've been messing around with the, um, especially the Nolly, the archetype Nolly one, and that, that one has different cabs and different heads, and there's like so much you can do there. This feels kind of specialized, like it's it's going for a specific tone, and I think I like that more. It, it's more, you know, it's not trying to be a jack of all trades, it's just trying to do this sound, and I think it kills it, and I think it's really easy to tweak. So, first things first, with the Neural DSP, their kind of interface, they're all kind of the same, which I really like. You've got your basic signal path in the top, and then you've got your global settings that never change as you click around between your different uh, kind of signal chain thing to tweak it. What's cool here too is that if you right click it, you can bypass something quickly without having to actually go to it and then like flip it on or flip it off, which I really like. I just discovered that actually uh, just just today. Really like really like the way this is laid out. Super super easy to understand. So the first thing is this plumes by earthquake devices like a like an overdrive pedal, kind of kind of typical to have it up front in front of your amp. Amp is real simple. Uh, it's kind of like a two-channel, sort of, with just a high and low gain switch over here. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's very simple. There's no other heads to mess around with. You've got power amp sections that you can change between, which is pretty cool. Sort of changes the kind of body, I would say, maybe, of the amp. And, and I've messed around with this uh, for the little uh, track that I did. Then you've got a graphic EQ section. I'm using uh, a dedicated... EQ after the fact with this one, so I'm not using the graphic, but this is great too, especially if you're using it in standalone and you just want to kind of tweak it and shape the tone slightly. This this is great. And then you've got your cab sim uh, part, which is really cool. Um, you've got two channels, a left and a right. You don't have to run the left and the right. You can turn one of them, you know, on and off, uh, so you can you can A B it and hear hear what each mic is kind of doing on its own. You can also load your own custom impulse responses. Um, I just use the the ones that come with it. Um, there's so much flexibility here, and there's so many different things that you can do. It, it's it's uh, I don't want to say overwhelming, but um, with a little tweakage, you know, you can you can get a good tone. So for for this one, I'm using like a Sennheiser 421, and then like a regular old Shure. SM57. And then for your sort of global levels, you've got a input, a built-in gate, uh, a mode to go between stereo and mono sources. This is super cool. A oversampling, high and normal. This is where you've got your different banks. So you've got the, def the default, a bunch of artists, factory, and then some user ones that I've been messing around with. Really quick and easy to to save and load and hop all around, and then the output level. I love that they have input and output levels right here, so if you're using it again in like standalone, maybe practicing along with a track, you can kind of mix the level to get it right so that you're you know not too loud or not too quiet. A couple other really cool things, they added a tuner on this one, and I absolutely love that they have a tuner. That was my only complaint about the other uh, specifically the Pliny one that I, I bought a while ago and have been using a lot to practice and in some upcoming productions. I just wanted it to have a tuner. That's it. And they've, they've got one built in right there. And I think that's, that's a great addition. Um, you know, makes a ton of sense for simplicity's sake. And then you've got a uh, MIDI uh, section where you can do some MIDI mapping. I'm planning on trying to build some sort of a live rig using these neural DSP plugins, I feel like the the flexibility, the quality of the tone, and then the potential ease of use, you know, setup and breakdown to not have to deal with a head or even potentially a cab. I'm going to experiment with a couple different things, but this is super cool. I can't wait to get into into the MIDI mapping and see how well that works, you know, if I can potentially potentially get out and, and, and gig it. So for this particular little track, this is actually something I put together about uh, over a year ago and felt like it was a perfect thing to just jump right in and, and start tinkering around with the plugin. So 
was a little shootout video I did between Ibanez, Kiesel, and Strandberg, three, three great guitar brands. And the cool thing about this is there was no clean guitar in it at all. It was all just overdriven, really heavy lead tone, really heavy rhythm tone. Um, so what's going to be happening is I've, I've got my three different guitars are recorded on the rhythm and they kind of pop back and forth in the very beginning of the track. You can see the camera cuts around and then the leads, you know, just cuts around between it, which is kind of cool because it's going to give you a little bit of a flavor for how the amp plugin is going to sound on different guitars as well. I'm using the amp sim or the Omega on both the rhythm and the Lead. Let me show you what I did to my main rhythm tone. So I'm just going to set up a quick loop. It's not my cleanest guitar playing, but whatever. So first things first, uh, this is something I've been doing a lot. I've got the rhythm guitars are double tracked. To simplify things slightly, I just bounced it down real quick on each one of those, and then that turns the two faders into one fader. And then the cool thing is you can send, so in this case I'm sending to the rhythm amp on each one of these. As long as you click and turn on the stereo source, it's going to treat that stereo source coming in as stereo. So that's awesome because it saves CPU, it saves workload. So at any rate, let's just take a look at some of my settings. For this one, I'm not using the pedal in front of it. I'm on the 6L6 power tube. On the head, I'm on the high gain. I got the uh, high gain setting. The gain is pulled back a little. Less bass, less mids, treble boost. Um, I'm on the flip up sort of voice and just have the depth and detail pushed a little bit. That's basically it. And then for the for the cab, you know, just the Sennheiser on the one and the Shure SM on the other, I'll, uh, I'll just kind of hit play, and then I'm going to turn, turn them off on and off each side so you can kind of hear what they're doing. next real big thing sort of processing wise was on the EQ end. So what I'll do is I'll just turn this off so you guys can hear what it sounded like pre-EQ now. So my basic moves here are pretty simple, pretty st uh, standard filtering top and bottom end you know just trying to control some of that low end rumble i'm on a drop a flat tuned guitar so there's plenty of low end junk kind of could get in the way of the bass and then trying to just control that top end have a couple kind of strategic slices i felt like i was getting a real big build up somewhere in the low end on some of those palm mutes and i think this this seemed to get it and then uh just had like kind of some fizz that i think uh these worked worked well on so so I'll hit play, and I'll just kind of turn these on and off so you can hear kind of exactly what they were doing. So of the three cuts, I think this one especially was vital. There was this weird sort of fizz that was easy to find. I think it was the first one that I cut. It was, you know, not not hard to find at all, you know, doing your typical, you know, jack the gain up a whole bunch and then and then just roll it back. So that was the rhythm guitar, and I will pop over and check out the leads. So some of this playing is a little a little sloppy, but that's okay. Uh, I think I'm going to start. I'll just uh, bypass my my uh, reverb and, and delay, and we'll just take a look at the at the head. So signal flow is a little different on this one. I am using the the plumes pedal in front of it. Gain is pretty hot on the amp. Uh, in the high gain setting, uh, you know, pit, pushing the mids quite a lot, treble a little bit, a lot of detail and a, and a decent amount of depth. So I'll hit play again, and what I'm going to do is I'll just change between the the different power tubes so you can hear the difference there. <laughs> So 
So for this amp setting, what I was trying to do was differentiate them mostly by using the power amp section. So I was on the 6L6s for the main rhythm tone, and then for the, you know, for the, for the lead tone was going with the KT66 and thought just the vibe was super cool. I didn't do a whole lot as far as messing around with, with the cab. Honestly, I, I pulled up from a preset and liked the way it was sounding. They're using a different mic pair than the other one. You got an SM and then like a, like a Royer ribbon mic and thought it sounded great. This whole interface is really quick and easy to use. You can start dragging it back to you know move the mic forward. You can move it onto the cone. Um, you, know, you can move it all around really quick and easy, which is, which is pretty cool. For the EQ here, it's pretty simple. Same sort of thing, you know, obviously filtering top and bottom, you know, d you know, trying to control the fizz of the top end, trying to control the rumble of the bottom. Um, and then I felt like as I'm rolling, rolling this back, you end up kind of losing a little bit of clarity that I liked in the top. So then I, I, you know, pushed in with the air EQ. This might seem sort of counterintuitive, but it means that you can really kind of dial that top end of the guitar to be exactly the way you want it to sound. So what I'll do is kind of the same thing. I'll hit play. I'll turn this on and off so you can hear what my different moves were. I felt like there was this weird sort of boominess down low, and I ended up using a dynamic EQ as well to help kind of control that. Um, but just to start, you know, I'll hit play and kind of turn this on and off and, and show you what, what the filtering is doing. Let's take a look at that dynamic EQ. This is something I've been doing more and more, like with bass tracks. I've got I've got a dynamic e, uh, EQ running on my bass track as well. You know, the cool thing about a dynamic EQ is that it's where that buildup of frequencies that you don't want happens. Then it'll control it. But then when when that buildup isn't happening, it'll let it you know just just go go through and not affect it the whole time. You know, an EQ is always on, but with a dynamic EQ, it only kicks on when that troublesome sort of frequency or the thing that you don't like is happening so i was i felt like that was just helping control sort of like you know, i've got a little bit on the on the lower mids and then and then down the lows just help trying to you know make sure that it didn't build up too much and now i'll throw on my uh, eq and delay i'm using the slate digital eq and or slate digital delay and reverb here uh just repeater pitchy one And Verb Suites Classic. This one sounds great. Just on the A plate, nothing crazy. I didn't spend a whole lot of time trying to, you know, design the reverb. It was whatever plate. Okay, good enough. I'll play it again now with that EQ and or with the uh, sorry, the delay and reverb engaged. <laughs> This is a plugin that I think is absolutely incredible because it is focused single-mindedly on on nailing the tone of this head and the cab and and it's not trying to do too much and I think there's a lot to be said there for being focused like that. So thanks for checking out this video. Really appreciate you watching. Hopefully you got something out of it. Hit like and subscribe. Do all that YouTube stuff helps us continue to grow, which is awesome. If you like this track, stop by and check out all of our original music. We're, you know, a prog metal band kind of in the vein of like, I guess, like plenty meets between the berry to me might be a good way of putting it, I guess. So, uh, you know, thanks and take it easy.